Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Last week we talked about a covered call back testing strategy. So today I'll be showing you guys how to refine this strategy to narrow down the search of tickers. We want to apply the strategy and also how to send orders to interactive brokers. So I did a back test on approximately 1400 tickers and my criteria for the search was to search my database for the most recent stock price. And that stock price had to be between $10 and $30. And that's just because I don't want to tie up too much margin using the strategy. So after I get the list of tickers, I'm going to go ahead and apply the strategy. And this is the same thing we went over last week. This will return a data frame with the returns, the sharp ratios and other statistics. I combine that list into a data frame. So I actually ran this on Thursday, November 18th, a day before monthly expiration. So if we open up this res data frame, I'll show you what that looks like. So this is our data frame. So out of the 1400 different tickers I passed in, I was able to get approximately 1300 in my database. So I really want to narrow this down into just a couple of tickers. So the first thing I'll search for is if you scroll a little bit to the right, the first thing I'm going to do is subset by this N here. So I want this back test to be complete and N represents the number of months we have traded or have done this back test on. So you see we have a couple of tickers that we don't have complete data for. So I'm gonna go ahead and subset for all those tickers that we do get complete cases. So I'm gonna pass in N, which is the max of that N variable. So I'm gonna subset all those tickers that match that criteria. The next criteria is that I wanna subset all those tickers with the sharp ratio greater than or equal to one. So I'll go ahead and run that as well. So now if we take a look at our REST data frame, we have really narrowed down the list to only 400 different tickers. Now let's try and narrow this down a little bit further. So here I'm just going to subset this list again, where the net premium is greater than the market points available. This just means we get more out of our call premium than what the market offers. And I'm gonna store that into this data frame called GD. So let's take a look at how many tickers that narrowed down the search to. So now we have 46. So since this back test is for approximately seven months, I wanna subset this data frame for all those tickers that have a net premium greater than or equal to seven. And that will just guarantee me that on average, I at least get a dollar per month. And this will eliminate all those tickers that have really small premiums. So let's run that line in our script. So again, I'm just gonna subset all those that have a net premium greater than or equal to seven. Now let's take a look at how many tickers we actually have. So we have narrowed down this list to approximately 11. Now, if we go to our net gains. So for net gains, I only want to return all those stocks that have been positive throughout these past seven months. So I'm going to subset this list again and return all those tickers that have a net gain equal to seven. And lastly, for this end below the strike, this column returns the number of times the stock closed below the strike. So I don't want this to happen. I actually want to sell my shares at the strike and just collect the premium. So I'm going to subset this data frame for all those stocks that have less than or equal to two. So if you go to our script here, we'll run those lines. And if we take a look at GD, we have narrowed down this list to only three tickers. So let's double check. Our net premium is greater than the market points, which seems to be true. Our average stock price for each of these is between 10 and 30, which is good since I don't want to tie up too much capital. We see that the average covered call return is, is pretty good and greater than the average stock return, which we want to see. For total CC RET or the total covered call return is pretty high compared to just the buy and hold. N is seven. This just means that it was able to back test for all those seven months. The number of times it closed below the strike was two for all of them, which is okay. This just means that we were able to close above the strike five out of the seven times, which is approximately 70% of the time, which is still pretty good. Even though the stock closed below the strike two times due to the amount of premium we collected, we were able to come out on the positive all seven times. And we have a covered call sharp ratio greater than or equal to one and still higher than the stock sharp ratio. So I took a look at the stock charts for all these three tickers over several months. And two of these were actually trading sideways, which is what I wanna see versus this last ticker, which has been trending towards the downside. So I just wanted to send orders for CLF and COnN. So let's take a look at the next step. 
So in this next function, I'm just gonna pass in a symbol, the expiration, and what date I want data for. So I'm gonna pass in the symbols in my GD data frame and get the next expiration, which is 12-17-2021 as of 11-18-2021. So let's go ahead and run that. All right, so since this returned a list, I need to combine everything into a data frame. So I'm gonna just row bind all the data and I only want the data for the top two. So let's take a look at that data frame. So here I just wanna trade CLF and CONN. The expiration date is December 17th, 2021. This is where the stock closed on Thursday, November 18th. The strikes in focus are the 21 strike for CLF and 23 for the other ticker. The mid price of this call option. Since both of these calls are in the money a little bit, I'm going to lose approximately 50 cents for each since I would have to buy the stock at 21.48 and sell it at 21 and buy this second stock at 23.49 and sell it at 23. So I lose approximately 50 cents, but since I'm receiving over a dollar in premium, I'm left with a dollar 11 for this first ticker and a dollar 81 for the second. So the net return is between five and 7% if I were to open up this position. So I just need to add one more thing to this data frame in order to pass in this data frame into a function and this will take care of the orders. And that would just be the combination price, the net price I'm willing to open up this position for, which would just be the stock close minus the mid price of the option. So I, I'm gonna go ahead and add that as a column. So let's go to our script and you see that in the very next line. So the stock close minus the premium should be our limit price. So now this data frame is all set and we could just pass that into this function and this will open up the orders in interactive brokers. So again, for the parameters, I'm just gonna pass in that data frame and the limit is the number of tickers you want to open up positions for. So I'm just gonna set that equal to two. And if we open up this function, I'll show you what that looks like. So in this function, I only have this set equal to a max of two, which you can just copy from each of these blocks since these are just repeats. So let's open up case one. So if the user only wants to open up one position, it will take that very first row in our next expiration data frame. Uh, it'll go ahead and connect to interactive brokers using this port number. And here we assign the parameters. So it'll get the symbol for the very first row along with the expiration, the strike, and the limit price. I'm going to require contract details by passing in the stock. My exchange is smart. Primary exchange is NASDAQ, and the currency I'm using is USD. I'm gonna create a TWS contract. I'm gonna pass in my contract ID for the stock, along with the ticker. The security type is bag, since this is a combination order. The currency and the primary exchange as well. I'm gonna create an empty TWS contract. I'm gonna pass in the stock, which is just the ticker. My currency, security type, this will be for the option since this is a TWS contract. The expiration should be formatted in this way. So year, month, and day. This is for a call option. So I'm just gonna pass in C, the strike, and the primary exchange. I'll go ahead and require contract details by passing in my connection and passing in this contract. And I do that just to get the contract ID which will be stored in this variable called OPT for option. So for my first leg, this will be for the stock and we just need to pass in the contract ID. The ratio is 100 for 100 shares that I want to buy and the exchange is smart. For the second leg, I'm just gonna pass in the contract ID for the option. I want to sell one contract and the exchange is smart. I'm gonna go ahead and pass those legs into this TWS bag. I need to pass in the contract ID for the stock, the stock ticker, security type will be bag, exchange would be smarts, and the primary exchange is NASDAQ. And for the combo leg, I'm gonna pass in leg one and leg two as a list. I'm gonna require a new order ID. I'm gonna create a order by using this wrapper TWS order. I'll pass in the order ID. I want this set as a limit order. The limit price will just be our limit price we calculated. I don't want this trading outside regular trading hours. The action will be buy. The total quantity is just one. I don't want to transmit this as a live order just yet since I'm just testing this. And then finally, I'll just go ahead and place the order by passing in my connection, my contract, and my order. After the order is placed, I'm just gonna disconnect and everything just becomes a repeat of this. So if we open up this block, if the user wants to open up two positions, 
as I mentioned, it's just a repeat. So the only things you would have to change is this block here when copying this. So again, this is just for the first row. After we place the order, I'm gonna set the system to sleep for two seconds and we're gonna assign new parameters and set this block equal to two for the next row. And after we get all the information and we place the order, I'm just gonna disconnect from TWS. So you can just copy this block and just assign it for multiple tickers depending on the number of stocks you want to trade. So I'm just gonna go ahead and minimize this function. I'll go ahead and run it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and send the orders. And if we take a look at our interactive brokers, we should see our orders pop up. So we double check just to make sure everything looks correct. So we do wanna open up 100 shares of stock and sell one call option at the December 17th expiration. We have set our limit prices. The quantity will just be one. And if I want to send this as a live order, I would just set transmit or just click here to transmit this to the live market. So everything looked correct. So I placed these orders on Thursday night for Friday morning on November 18th. So I'll go ahead and show you the positions I opened up for these two stocks. So here I have CLF and CONN. So the average price for CLF was 1990 and for CONN was 2120. I had originally sent out uh, order for 1989 on CLF and 2119, but I think this price includes the transaction cost. So this is not investment advice. I'm not telling you to open up these two positions. I'm just showing you guys how to narrow down the list on a back test and what criteria I'm looking for. So I'll go ahead and update you guys on these two positions on December 17th and see how it all went down. I'm also going to place a link down in the description area where you can get the script. And finally, I'll just show you guys the account configuration. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys the global configuration. I actually had to restart my trade station because it crashed. So if you go to file, global configuration, here you will click on API. All right, so for my settings, you only want to have these boxes checked and make sure that the port number is the correct one you're using in your script. And for precautions, I just have these checked. All right, guys, well, this concludes the video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And I'll see you guys in the next video.